purpose is really twofold. We're going to be looking at how our program is advancing the district goals for AP. And secondly, we're going to be learning uh, protocol for using not only with our group today, but also with your school departments. The very first step we're going to start with um, is simply describing the data. And looking at the data, you're going to have a few minutes to go through the data individually. What grabs your attention? What is it about the data that really jumps out at you? Sort of an ebb and flow going on, especially in the Lang scores, the LIT scores, aggregate for the county uh, over the last five years. It's, it's a, sort of a steady growth, mostly. But the Lang shows aberrations. Yeah. You have in 2013, we had an enormous number of students enrolled. Mm -hmm. And um, that number fell off a little bit. Was that the year that we first yes. split yeah. mm -hmm. the Lang and the right. LIT, and we, for the first so time, had all these juniors okay. taking Lang? Mm -hmm. That's okay. why. Right. I mean, and the seniors as well. I wanted to know if that was the year. Because okay. in my hold, notes, that was. Michelle, hold that thought a minute. And what I might recommend, because it, I, in this process, it is very difficult to separate your observations and facts from all the information that you know from experience. And, um, and so drawing conclusions is a very natural part of this process. Um, but it does divert our attention from the facts right now. Um, and so we want to make sure that before we go any further, we get those facts up there. So as, you're, as we're talking um, and some of your prior knowledge and information that you have comes to mind, make note of it. I need to go back to uh, Brenda to get clarification on what you were sharing. The enrollment figures for Lang have done sort of a roller coaster thing. They were on the lower side, then they had a huge boom in 2013 and then a little dip. All right, now what did the data tell us and what do the data not tell us? And so now what you're going to start looking for are some relationships, uh, the cause and effect between what the uh, facts tell us, what the numbers tell us, and what you know. So now your prior knowledge will start to play a huge part in, in the process as we move forward. Joe, I think when you look at the subgroups, there's a lot of ones, zeros, um, and that could be taken two ways. If you know our county, you know that there's certain schools that are very diverse and certain schools that are not. Um, two, you know, two things I noticed in the subgroups. I know in the SATs there's um, breakdown by gender, so I'm not sure if that's something that we if we have the data for SATs. Yes. Very good. Because we were surprised at our school um, about such a stark difference. The other thing that I would say. Um, I think this goes back to what Tom said about philosophy. Um, for example, our school made the decision to not honors to not offer honors 11. Um, so that affected our numbers in terms of those tested. And I know FSK also did that. So it was actually helpful to see the years that, that they experimented with that to compare yes. apples to apples. So Tina, what question does that raise, I think, in general? It's just, it, I think it helps us to relook and really talk through the philosophy to All find scheduling. a balance. Yeah. Okay. So I but if I could address that, I mean, but the number that we really want to keep in mind, like our, our kind of grade for ourselves and our schools, should be looking at that first number in the 2015 overall column right. and the first number in the 2011 column overall. Has that number grown? Are more right. kids achieving? Achieving. achieving. Right. Mm -hmm. We can't lose sight of that because we get caught up in percentages because percentages no, is a I very agree. sexy number. But and I think, but I think the media, and I think certain things do highlight that. And then you problem. also have things that the data doesn't yeah. tell you. Sure. Right. Is parents and do and doing what's right for kids. But you have four times them. the number of kids achieving, so that's what you need I, to be. Very That's your double happy. down. Yeah. This doesn't show us the other scheduling conflicts. Okay. You know, students who are taking a number of different AP classes and, and who are, you know, picking and choosing to balance out, yeah. and again, as seniors especially, I think. 
focus on celebrations. What good news is there to celebrate? As you look at the data, um, what is it that kind of jumped out and gave you that sense of, you know, we are doing a lot of things right? How about somebody we haven't heard from yet? It's a couple in the group that. I was just thinking exposure. That is such a, a big thing. Tell us more. Those kids to that. Tell us more. I mean, that we're exposing more kids? To the AP and the higher level thinking, and it's just a good thing overall. I'll agree with that. I've had a lot of anecdotal mm -hmm. reports from students who got a two on the exam and just saying things like the grocery store. I've been reading all summer. Step four, uh, you're going to focus on what problems the, of practice, what problems um, do you see or do you, can you infer um, from the data? We lack uh, cohesion on the, uh, above the school level, a place where we can, where principals can come together and talk about AP practice and, and philosophy. Our minority students, these subgroups, are most affected by this philosophy. So if you look at our county data over the years that we've increased, our subgroups have gone up quite a bit. So we are clearly, as we increase enrollment, we are bringing in a more diverse student population. Um, but where we're not is where we're underserving those subgroups even more so then. So in our most diverse school, there's been no growth in subgroups because there's been no growth in enrollment. I think, and that's an equity issue again. And I, to go along with that, I don't know if that lack of growth could be due to, I don't know if it's fear or just not being prepared, um, not knowing how to address those new students coming in. You're used to teaching the top 2%. What's going to happen? How do I have to change when I'm now including more students into that group and not... So I don't know if yeah. it's fear. I don't know if well, it's... It's philosophy, too. It, I mean, yeah, we, it is, we, is that we philosophy. We've got to be clear about... It seems that the county does have a philosophy, and it's been adopted by many of the schools, but the fact that it hasn't been adopted by all of the schools is a problem. What are those key conclusions? What recommendations do you have for addressing the problems that we just identified? I think uh, what you're really getting into is vertical alignment, so we really need to be taking a look at, at all grade levels. Um, but at my school, we didn't offer honors 11 or honors 12, just to kind of kickstart our numbers, and that's part of where we got the big jump, but then we added in 11, and then the next year we've added in the honors 12. Um, by adding in the honors 11, we were able to move some kids that were maybe in a level 610 into an honors, and by the time their seniors get them up into an AP class. Uh, so I think the vertical alignment piece is important. It would be wonderful to have our own conference sometime so place. that we knew school to school who else taught AP we could use each other for resources that could be a recommendation is to bring back the county AP cohort yeah. in our summer Which, session yeah. it was just a day but it was we, I thought we were really successful it was a good group let me take you we have a, a minute or two left let me take you back to some of the problems that you listed over here how can how might some of these problems translate into recommendations. AP is an integral to creating a culture of expectation and, and equity within a school. I don't think there's another program nationally or locally that comes even close. Basically, I think this does set a direction for us um, for this coming school year and our focus for our PD with our departments. Um, the first thing that I'd like for you to do is to use this whole process that we've been through today with your departments members because I think it's important for them to have these discussions and to come up with these conclusions um, for your own school because as we said, we were looking at it from a systemic view. Um, we're looking at it from the district level. And by you guys looking at it specifically to your school, you could actually pull in you know, your principal into these discussions and talk about some of these problems that um, you're concerned about as far as scheduling and opening it up to more AP um, training for your teachers, especially those who are new to your program. Because a lot of you did have a large turnover in AP teachers, and you do have a lot of new teachers. And that can't help but impact the data that we're looking at here. 
And of course now the challenge is, anytime you do uh, anything with data, the challenge is, is taking action.